Hey, what's up, everybody? Locked on Badgers. You're, thank you for making this your first listen every single day. Great show today. More in-state recruiting news. we got John Garcia, Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director. Locked on's Recruiting Insider jumping on the show. And we're going to get into it, guys. You're not going to want to miss it. You are Locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ryan Herring's your host of Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. We've had a few tech issues, so we're going to jump right into it. we got John Garcia coming into the show. Uh, John, since you were last on, man, we got more recruiting news. Uh, in-state running back Nate White commits, uh, six-foot kid, lanky out of Milwaukee. Uh, what's your feel on his game and his recruitment? Just a total change of pace for Wisconsin running back recruiting, and that's great. That's absolutely needed. For the Badgers, you know, you recently got Jaquez Keys committed, a bigger in-between-the-tackles, one-cut kind of runner. Uh, and now, all of a sudden, Nate White offers a counter to that. You know, everybody remembers thunder and lightning combinations from the 90s and early 2000s in, in various running back rooms. And this w- would certainly appear to be the makings of, of that next grouping uh, in Madison. Uh, I think with, with Nate White, there's a lot of slasher in his game. Uh, You think of like on basketball, like the the wings who shoot and stay outside, they're cute and that's all fun. But you really get excited about those slashers, those guys who can cut in and get explosive, play above the rim, et cetera. So I think Nate White brings some of that on the football field. He's a guy that that can make you miss in space. He can outrun you thereafter, but but he's no slouch from a physicality standpoint either. Six foot, six one, maybe 180 pounds. He'll gain some weight, so I'm not really worried about his slight frame at this point, but, but he plays with an edge. You know, I think he, there's a bit of uh, like, I want to embarrass you in his game yeah. uh, to some of the opponents. And I, I love that. You know, I think, you know, I'm not sure how the, how great the competition is in the city of Milwaukee. I, I don't pretend to know those intricacies, but you know, he's got, he's got some edge and competitiveness to his game that I think will resonate as a running back. If it translates to all elements of the running back position. Does he have that as a blocker? Does he have that as a receiver? Does he have that as a guy who's going to buy in and, and and learn the playbook, all those things. If he has that in all elements of his football life, I do think that aggression and that style uh, can certainly translate in the big 10. But, but again, on the surface level, this kid has juice. Uh, th- this kid can make plays when it appears like there aren't any plays to be made. And it's not all instinctive. I think he's got polished vision to his side, um, you know, he takes a lot of direct snaps in high school. Uh, so I think that really limits the amount of time you have to make decisions on on holes and where they might break open relative to, to your O-line and, and the defensive front. So I do think that combination of great instincts, wiggle, and vision uh, is a strong foundation when you think about the top end speed he has uh, soon thereafter. So as he gets a little bit more technical, you know, maybe uh, runs on a lower plane, carries the football a little bit more tightly. He's a little bit loose with it at this stage. Once he develops some of those elements of his game, I think he could be a true change of pace type of back uh, for Wisconsin. You know, we're used to the bruisers and and that certainly still works. And you certainly will, will keep recruiting that. But now you can challenge a defense laterally at that same light with a kid like Nate White in the fold. So I, I love the the room that Wisconsin is trying to build in this class of, of 2023. Yeah, and that's where I wanted to go next. Um, it, it's kind of the the perfect turnkey neighbor to bring in jo- Jekyll's keys. We've talked about keys a lot on this show as that physical hammer. I've compared him to kind of the high floor guy who's, who's gonna very likely be a good player if, if he stays injury-free. To me, this is the high ceiling guy to pair with him, right? And you could vision, envision this in three years. You know, you have the hammer with keys, and then you have in the third quarter when a defense is worn down, you bring it in white and you hit him with a jet sweep or a screen or get him in space. Yeah, that's why I'm curious to see where his game develops, Ryan. That's a great point. I, I see it exactly how you do. Um, how many gadget things can he bring mm-hmm. uh, to, to the backfield to the point where maybe one day you're lining them up together uh, in the backfield, maybe flanking the quarterback, you know, and that really presents a different type of issue for a defense because they are so – uh, polar opposite, opposites in terms of, of their strengths. Uh, so as as he develops, talking Nate White, as he develops uh, and polishes up a little bit, I, I do think he could present a, a truly different 
type of threat, a little bit more dynamic in the open field um, and where those instincts really take over. And I think that's where you really can't coach that part of his game. Uh, and, and I think that's needed uh, across programs like Wisconsin that are known for maybe being a little bit more conservative and, 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 and playing it, you know, tooth and nail, you can now open it up and, and maybe take a little bit more risk uh, with a guy like Nate White uh, in the backfield and on the roster in general. So if he can develop, especially as a, as a pass catcher, to me, that can really complement the space game that he will already bring as a ball carrier to this Wisconsin offense. And, and, and that way you can get him on the field a little bit sooner and certainly on third downs, which is you know always important. You need guys who can make plays without anything designed for them to make plays. Just me versus mm-hmm. you, I'm going to get by you. And, and I think that kind of juice is, is what Nate White brings. And that's welcomed with what Wisconsin needs to do from an offensive standpoint. Yeah, and I know this is still early in, in White's career and his life as a professional football player and just as a guy, as a, a person in general. Uh, but is he the type of guy you look at on film and say, I have a hard time envisioning a – not necessarily that he has to be, but I have a hard time envisioning a three-down workhorse back. I see him as a – like you said, and the first name possible mind is a Percy, Percy Harvin. He's not Percy Harvin, but like a, a guy that you got to get him the ball in spaces and find ways. Like he's going to wear it down. He's not big enough. Yeah, I mean, look, he, he's he's got the frame to add some weight, you know, so I do think he could become a little bit more of that every down back. Uh, but, yeah, certainly as, as he profiles right now, he would be a change of pace type. But, but look, I mean, I think there are certain programs that, that will rely on one back, but that doesn't mean you got to stay in that mold forever. You know, I think mm-hmm. uh, you look at some of the, the programs known for that beyond Wisconsin, right? You know, Iowa has used multiple backs over the last few years, Alabama, Ohio State, that were known for bell cow types. They have begun, you know, using running back, not by committee, but a certain system of balance there to, to keep everybody fresh uh, and, and healthy until we get later in the season. So I think Wisconsin can utilize some of that uh, as well. I don't think you have to build for a, a you know, bell cow type of, of back anymore for the most part. There there will be exceptions. Like, look, at Texas, Bajon Robinson is going to get like 50 touches a game. It just is what it is. But I think that will be more of a rarity as, as time goes on, especially as the game continues to widen out. But you can utilize some of those touches – as an extension of the running game, even when it's not a handoff, right? I mean, can can Nate White catch a bubble screen? You mentioned jet sweeps, some counters, some things that are a little bit more off script that still present like an extension of the running game. I think that's where uh, a guy with his skill set can really shine if he hits his mark and develops as a senior in high school and, and soon thereafter when, when he gets to Madison for good. Yeah, that's a great point. And certainly sometimes it's just about getting athletes in and letting them develop. Um, you know, letting the coaches figure it out down the road. All right, guys, uh, we're going to continue the conversation with John. We have um, official visits coming up in June, some big-name prospects, some guys I really like are coming up. We're going to ping John, see what he thinks. Uh, But first, let's get into today's show. It's brought to you by Rock Auto. I've talked about Rock Auto a lot. Rock Auto is the best place to buy a car parts in 2022. It's easy. It's simple. You're going to save time. And more importantly, guys, you're going to save money, 30 50 to 100% off what you're getting at the local shop. Okay, you're going to have parts shipped right to you. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your house if you're a DIYer. It is a family business. They've been doing it the right way for a long, long time, for decades. And it's why they built a community, just like we're trying to do with this Badger community. They built a community out of delivering on their promise, out of being better than anyone else. So today, if you have something going on with your car, you need some help, go to their website. It's incredibly easy to use. Drop-down menus, intuitive, super, super user-friendly. I've used it a lot for my Jeep Compass. Um you're going to want to go to rockauto.com right now to see all the parts available for your car or truck. You're going to write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, guys, thank you again for making Locked On Badges your first listen every single day. If you're finding us on, on podcast, thank you so much for the listen. If you're finding us on YouTube, welcome. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to bring John back into the fold and get very, very grateful for his time, as always, man, bringing some some insight, unique insight into this conversation. Um, June visits coming up, John, some really big time, I, some prospects I really like coming to Madison, coming on campus. Um, I want to highlight three of them with you. I want to start with Khalil Tate, who is a, a long limbed defender, you know, listed as a cornerback, but he, he plays safety. I think he can play receiver. He's on special teams. Um, what's your feel on the the defensive prospect coming out of Illinois? Yeah, he's interesting, Ryan. Like you said, I mean, he's listed at 6'3", even if he's 6'2". I mean, this is a lengthy 
defensive mm-hmm. back who's got that versatility. I, I love – if you're lengthy with ball skills, you, you can fit somewhere in today's game, and, and that's certainly with, with what Tate brings to, to the fold. I love that he has corner experience. He's probably more of a nickel or safety in college, but the fact that he has considerable corner experience is perfect. I mean, that's what you want – guy who's used to playing out on an island who has to flip his hips just a little bit more. Uh, I think Tate can bring you uh, some of that with that great frame to go along with it. And then you look at the schools that are recruiting him and it's like developmental you, right? Iowa, it's yep. Wisconsin, it's, it's programs. It's going to be an all big 10 battle. Probably it's, it's programs who have been there and done that with guys like him. Uh, and I think that's, that's great. I mean, that's really where, you get to flex your muscle when it's not an obvious, hey, this guy's ready today to go play corner against, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Like, it's not always like that. It's, it's actually rarely like that. So getting a guy or, or being in the mix for a guy who's going to be that developmental type, I think, uh, is quite critical. Uh, and look, I think this could be just, I mean, I, I'm sure this happens like every day for you, Ryan. It's probably a Wisconsin-Iowa battle there uh, yeah. at the end of the day. And that's, and that's you know, with old linemen, with with DVs and probably linebackers and running backs too. Let's throw them in there. Very similar of, of what we kind of you know hear about typically, and these are the battles that you know Paul Christ is judged by. You know, mm-hmm. can you go head to head with Iowa and win with the same kind of guy and the same kind of style? Uh, and I think Tate will be an interesting study between the two. He's he's in it for both. He's going to visit both officially in the month of June, and and, and the chips will fall. Uh, where they may, but you have to envision Wisconsin staying in the thick of it, you know, all the way through. So, hey, John, next guy I want to talk about, uh, I think we both are on the same board with Tate, love his film. I want to talk about the the offensive tackle 6'6", coming out of Tennessee, Joe Crocker, uh, big framed kid. What are your thoughts on his game? I think he's he's pretty raw. The size is immense here, obviously, you know, 6'6", 6'7", depending on where you look. Uh, he's, he's a big, wide-bodied tackle who, who could probably play guard if you need him to, although the height, you know, one, one, get that verified because I'm, I'm curious because there's a certain almost like a height limitation when, when you're playing inside. Uh, but look, Crocker's got a ton of ability, multi-sport guy, really accomplished uh, with the discus in terms of track and field. I think he just threw for state uh, there in the state of Tennessee. So a guy who's not, you know, 100% full-time with football, which is a good thing. You know, I think – you know, we talked about development with some of these other guys. I mean, this is one where it really would shine uh, mm-hmm. for a school like Wisconsin. And, and look, same thing. The schools that are in the mix, again, a lot of Big Ten. SEC is going to get involved here. Um, I do think that from a floor perspective, uh, he's really solid in pass protection. That wingspan, that length, obviously, is going to create uh, plenty of advantages uh, from an offensive tackle standpoint. And he does show uh, some of that progress uh, there in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, but I just think in terms of leverage, uh, polish mechanically, he does need to kind of settle in uh, towards his, his future at offensive line, dependent on where he's going to play uh, from a positional standpoint. And I think that's where his recruitment could get quite interesting because it does seem like he's going to leave the state of Tennessee to play his college football, uh, which, which is a big deal. That, that's not easy to do uh, on the recruiting trail. But we've seen the Big Ten and the Midwestern footprint dip into Tennessee since it's right there on the border uh, relatively consistently. So I think Crocker, another one of these kids, June official visits all over the place, uh, Wisconsin right in the thick of that. Uh, so I do think that the Badgers are going to stay uh, in the middle of this race. Uh, and again, this is, this is a kid that is athletically – still far from what he is going to be probably by the time we see him suit up uh, for, for one of these programs. But yeah, Michigan State's involved. Mississippi State, I think in SEC country, is, is doing a pretty good job uh, in this recruitment. Uh, so we'll see. It seems like there's a bit of a ways to go in it before he makes a decision. Uh, but these trips will obviously set the table for just how quickly that can change. And I want to touch on also, and I agree with you with Crocker. I, I feel like he's a guy who plays high. He, he, you can almost tell he doesn't really know who he – he isn't really mentally grown into his body yet. Physically, he's kind of grown into it a little bit, but mentally he's not yeah. quite there. Um, I want to touch on uh, the other kid I wanted, Mikhail Gardner, the, the 6'2", kind of 270, 280-pound defensive lineman. Kind of reminds me of Pierce, you know, the other Wisconsin Badgers defensive lineman commit that they recently picked up. Uh, I'm curious, is his game comparable there, or is it? am I looking at something different? 
No, I, I think there's there's some insight out to his game as well, which I know we talked about before. Um, and and I think the production is is really strong. You know, Arizona's one of the first of all. How about Wisconsin recruiting right. uh, more more in in the southwestern part of the country? But I do think that the profile of that area of football is is on the rise. You know, I think because of the pandemic, because of people moving, inflation, all these things are pushing people towards newer areas, and 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 the state of Arizona particularly has been one we've seen the the level of football become elevated over the last five to 10 years or so. Um, and this kid is, is right in the thick of that. And I think what's unique about the Wisconsin approach in his recruitment, first of all, he's, he's a great fit, right? Inside out pass rusher, extremely productive, quicker than fast with that tweener size that used to be such a negative. Now it's a positive because we're, we're playing basketball on grass. Everything's a little bit more mm-hmm. wide open. So if you can get a pass rush from the interior, you're now, you know, that much closer to, to doing what you need to do defensively. Um, but I think what's interesting about his recruitment, Ryan, is all Pac-12 and Big 12 and then Wisconsin. It's like it's mm-hmm. like its own deal for the Badgers. And I think that kind of novelty aspect of it is really great uh, from Wisconsin's perspective. He has already taken one OV. I think he was up at Cal uh, earlier this month. And then June, again, he's going to hit a bunch of visits uh, and Wisconsin will be, you know, lumped into that one. I don't think he's been to campus before. Uh, he wasn't even, uh, he was offered relatively recently as well. Uh, so I do think that those are great things uh, from the Badger perspective. It kind of forces you to look look twice at it. Uh, and then perceptionally, you know, Wisconsin can stand up to a lot of programs in that department, especially with defensive recruits, something I know we've talked about for quite some time. So those are kind of the elements you have to add if you are going to pull a kid from well outside the region that that is being recruited by those type of schools. You have to have that kind of strong perceptional element. And then, of course, you got to get them up on campus. So once that happens, it it will be game on for Wisconsin. But look, stranger things have happened in in recruiting. And, And I also like to see Wisconsin go out outside of the footprint, go go outside of the traditional footprint continuously. You know, that's that's always a good counter to to your base. Yeah, and it's something they've certainly sold that number one number one statistical defense last year. They've been a great defense for yeah. years and years, and they've used that as a net to kind of cast a wider area of recruitment for defensive players. I want to leave on this because I again I always always run out of time before I run out of <laughs> questions. John, I know you got to get running here pretty soon. Anything new on Tackett Curtis that you've heard? And follow up question on that: the longer a recruitment like that goes on for a four or five star kid the more you have to get worried about potential NIL implications, those kind of things. Yeah, that's a great point. Cause obviously the closer you are to enrolling at a school, the more prevalent uh, the NIL mm-hmm. part is, is going to become a part of the conversation, legal or illegal. It, it is what it is in the world of recruiting. But, but yeah, speaking of recruiting outside the footprint, the Louisiana linebacker, uh, Tackett Curtis, same old story from the official visits again, all in June, Wisconsin, USC, Ohio State, all in in the thick of it there. But he did finally visit LSU. And that's obviously the school that we've all been kind of like, what is going on there? Ed Orgeron's staff wasn't super high on him, did not utilize a lot of resources with him. But now Brian Kelly's staff has has tried to change that. And they finally took the visit down uh, to Baton Rouge. uh, And they were really impressed. They were really impressed with what they saw. Um, to the point that LSU is probably going to factor into this thing. So now, like you said, you're looking at the timeline, and it's it's usually the opposite when the in-state school's in the mix. You're usually like, hey, sooner the, the better for that in-state school. Right, right. This is the opposite. Like, the sooner he commits, the better for everyone else because he's long been considered a guy who was like, hey, I'm, I'm leaving Louisiana for college. And look, I don't want to make it seem like that's not still the most likely scenario. I do think – Ohio State, Wisconsin in particular, with a sprinkle of USC, they're going to stay in the mix, and and that group is still the more likely destination. But depending on this timeline and how it starts to shift, I know he wants to commit before the season, but if that starts to change a little bit, I do think that will begin to favor the the in-state LSU Tigers to a degree. Uh, But look, he's going to take these officials. Um, There is no official scheduled for LSU at this point. He does have a couple of spaces left to add them to the list. But right now, Wisconsin, Ohio State, USC are kind of the three. And again, the longstanding thought that this kid was going to go well outside of the footprint to go play his college football, I do think 
still resonates despite the in-state connection to LSU and the fact that he's actually had some family members that, that have attended uh, school down there in Baton Rouge. So certainly something to keep an eye on, uh, as you're always well aware of, Ryan. Um, and, and uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm just looking at that timeline for Curtis because he's one of these national guys that could take as long as he wants. And right. everyone's going to say, yeah, go ahead. Take your time. We'll be here on, on signing day with, with your letter of intent. Um, but you wonder from the kid's perspective, hey, you know, does that mean you use all that space or you say, you know what, I, I've already built all these relationships. I'm a little further down the line and making a decision. Let's go ahead and, and pull that trigger. But then in that case, if it's not LSU, you're always wondering, he's got an LSU official available. Will he take it during the season? Right. Death Valley, all that perception. I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting no matter what. And LSU is going to factor in no matter what after getting this first visit. Uh, so, you know, again, if you want to plant the flag, go into LSU and take a great defensive player out of Louisiana. You want to be a national program, a college football playoff contender, go do that. Uh, and I think that's it's still possible and, and maybe even probable at this point. But for Wisconsin, I think that's that's going to be a big barometer relative to some of the other big time programs in the country. Yeah, no, that would certainly do it. Um, all right, guys, I have to let John go. Unfortunately, he is John Garcia, Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director, Locked On's Recruiting Insider. As always, man, we love the insight. Uh, can't wait to have you back again, hopefully next week. Cheers, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. of course, brother. All right, have a good one. Likewise. All right, guys. Um, Coming up next on the segment, we're going to talk a little bit more about the official visits, the recruiting wrap up, kind of what we just talked about, um, and kind of let you know what's coming up on the show. But first, today's show is also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your online sports betting needs and information, and not just sports, Vegas games, online casino games. It is an easy to use website. Um, all the trends and actions we talked about uh, just a show ago, the over under for Wisconsin is that set at eight and a half. This is something you can do with any team. If you're a college football junkie, which a lot of people listen to this show are, go look at some over-unders. Check out Nebraska's and bet the under. How about that? I'll give you your lock of the week right there. Right, It's a great place to just play with your sports knowledge and nerd out a little bit. Look at NFL futures. NBA playoffs are going on. Baseball's in full swing. Great place to go and do all your online sports wagering. Great place to get news, notes, and just have fun, guys. Website's easy to use. We use it at Locked On. Head to the website today. Make use of your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Um, bet online where the game starts. All right, guys, thank you again for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every single day. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, bearing with us with a few technical difficulties today. We had to hurry through a few points. I appreciate it. If you're listening on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. For all the podcast listeners, you guys are awesome. Please listen, like, li uh, subscribe to the show if you haven't. Really appreciate everything. I want to talk a little bit more. We got into it with John with the 2023 kind of recruiting class, the official visits coming up. I love what they started to do here with some of the athletes on the defensive side. Um, Khalil Tate, we talked about with John. Let me tell you, if you haven't had a chance to watch this film, and I'm going to link the huddle film in the, the, probably when I drop this show, it's just awesome. The first guy reminded me of a little bit, and he's not as big and physical, but like a Taylor Mays out of USC. And he's not that dude. Don't get me wrong. But just a guy who's bigger than everybody on the defensive side in the secondary and runs around knocking the snot out of dudes. His film is awesome. I love watching guys on special teams flying around, making plays, hitting things, hitting two people, decleating them. Like, that's a baller. There's an intangible factor there that you can't always tell players. With Tate, I feel like you can at least – listen, you, you, you can't – I'm not trying to get in his head. I don't know what his motivations are. But I can tell he likes hitting people. I can tell he's not going to be shy on the field. Like, I love that. If we got Tate, uh, and I think from what we've seen, it's very possible he's coming up on the official. Obviously, we're contending with Iowa for him. And Iowa's put out a lot of defensive backs, guys. Wisconsin hasn't. That's going to be a factor in this recruitment, I think. But if we can land Tate, I think he would instantly become my favorite recruit in this class. And I like some of the kids a lot. I like Nate White a lot. We talked about him in the first segment of the show. Tate, to me, would be a potential game changer on defense. And you pair him defensively a couple years down the road. At that point, maybe Hunter – and again, this is all projection. Right? Things don't usually work out the way you, you think they're going to. But in a couple years, Hunter Wohler is a senior, potentially. Maybe Tate's a sophomore next to him, and there's just starting defense – there's just starting safeties. I also like – and I want to talk about Nate White with this because I haven't seen this brought up. I like the idea of bringing in six foot, six one, six two, six three athletes, right? Because in this class, you got JT Taylor. We've talked about Taylor. 
Taylor, I liked him at receiver. John Garcia liked him at cornerback. He's being brought in in the secondary. I, he's a dude to me that can play three spots. He can play corner, safety, and potentially receiver. You bring in a guy like we talking Khalil Tate, who I, I hope we get. You know, Tate, if he doesn't pan out at safety, he, I think he could be a receiver. And then even Nate White, right? Nate White's being brought in a running back, and I, I love it. I love the combination with him and Keys. Nate White is a guy to me, he, he can be a corner. Like, I, he's got those type of quickness skills and size. I, I can't help but think, geez, man, what would that dude look like in the secondary, right? I, what would that dude look like at receiver? You know, and I really like the idea of bringing in some of these guys that, listen, you never know what's going to happen. Players leave, players progress differently, players get hurt. Um, I, I think there's potential here. Never forget Natrol Jamerson many years ago under Gary Anderson was brought in as a receiver and became a great safety for us. I like bringing in multi-positional players that you can project to a couple different spots. And I think, quite frankly, there's three or four of them that when this class ends, we're going to be on. Um, I want to finish up with the defensive line. So that's my take there. I, I love, um, the, I love uh, Gardner coming in on the official visit. I like Pierce a lot. I still think this class needs a big, big dude in the middle, a tree stump that you can't move. And I don't think uh, Mikhail Gardner's that. I don't think Pierce is that. I think they need somebody in there still, and that's still going to be, to me, a big need in this class. And they're in on a couple big dudes. Uh, they're in on a couple true nose tackles in this class. They need to get one. Because I don't think that guy's on the roster right now. And you don't need him for a lot of games. A lot of teams simply aren't going to try to test the middle. But you need it against Iowa. You need it against Minnesota at times. You need it against Michigan State, Michigan. Um, you need that Benton replacement. And that's the one spot looking at some of these defensive line prospects coming in. If we're talking Gardner. We're talking Bears. We're still looking at the Curtis Neal from last year. I don't think they've addressed that need yet. So something for me to look out for. I love the running back grouping. I love Tate. Uh, Joe, uh, yeah, Jay Crocker, Joe Crocker, sorry, Joe Crocker, the 6'6". Let me just check my up. Joe Crocker, the 6'6", uh, offense tackle coming in from Tennessee for a visual visit. I love his upside. Big kid, needs to grow a lot, needs to get more physical and kind of learn how to move around. But I, I like what he is. Um, but we still need that big nose tackle in this class is kind of where I'm at. All right, guys, listen, thank you so much for listening. Um, coming up, we have a, a couple really exciting interviews um, on the horizon with the show. The Buck Around is going to be joining us. If, I'm sure tons of people remember the buck around. Uh, we're going to get uh, one of those guys on the show and do kind of a state of the union. We have an interview with a couple press uh, Wisconsin reporters. We have a basketball player coming on. So really appreciate everybody listening. Can't tell you how much it means to me on the podcast side. Um, please leave a review, subscribe to the show. If you like it on the YouTube side, again, welcome. Um, if you like the show, hit the little subscribe button. Can't thank you all enough. And I appreciate it on Wisconsin until uh, tomorrow. We'll talk.